Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks, to The Hungry Gamer is back with another playthrough. And today we're doing a playthrough of Dungeons of Doria, which is coming to crowdfunding relatively soon. And you can also check out my mini preview of the game as well if you're interested. And there's a link to that down in the description. Now, before I jump into this classic dungeon crawler sandbox style game and give you the story of what's going on, I do need to say, please make sure you turn your Klingon subtitles because when I make mistakes, and I most likely will, there's a lot of stuff going on in this game, that is where you will find those corrections. So please do make sure you have those turned on. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is the first scenario of the Grim Reaper campaign. And for that, I have the warrior and the scoundrel. Now, I've done all of my setup kind of off screen because there's uh, several things going on there. But what I do have is in the initial loot draw that I got, I did very, very well for my warrior and got a whole bunch of stuff that he's actually able to wear. And so I actually got almost a whole set of this segmented armor, giving him some more AP, a lot more armor, and a better weapon as he got this hatchet, which is just slightly better than what he started with with his hammer. And the scoundrel did not do quite as well, only having what the scoundrel actually starts the game with. But we will do our best and see how we do here. Now I'm also going to point out that over here, you see I have this little orange thing here. This should be a specific token that comes in the game, but apparently mine either didn't come with it or it's somewhere in all the other tokens and I just can't find it. I spent a good half an hour this morning trying to find the token and I just couldn't do it. So know that this is not what it should be for the round counter and I do apologize for that. I have a few tokens over here. More importantly, I have my shop right here, my three items that are available to me. All of the 480 or 720 or whatever loot cards. This is actually just about a third of them, they're all off screen and I'll be pulling from there as I go. But with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump on in and we will see how this goes. So, the first of the Grim Reaper. Your group has been assembled to complete a small mission. You're supposed to smoke out a nest of monsters whose inhabitants have become too invasive for the peoples of this region. You quickly found the Dungeon of Monsters and set out to drive the fiends away. But as soon as you've entered the dungeon, the entrance is sealed and you're trapped. A moment later, you hear a grating voice echoing through the dungeon. Death is certain to all of you. You may delay it, but you cannot stop it. A moment later, a black-robed person appears near the sealed entrance. You are only left with one option, fleeing forward into the dungeon. And so we are faced by the Grim Reaper, which is represented by the poltergeist standee right here. And it has its own special rules, and I'll kind of go through that as we play through the game. And basically what we're doing is we're going to be going through the dungeon trying to get to the dungeon tile F1. And in F1 there will be a ladder of some sort and we can do some tests to try to get ourselves out. And there's extra bonuses if we manage to kill all of the other monsters in the dungeon and we cannot kill the Grim Reaper. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get started. And... I'll do my best to kind of explain what I'm doing as I go. But to start out... I have to roll up for initiative here, and just for your knowledge, I'm doing, I'll be doing things a little bit quicker if I'm rolling combat or something against the bad guys. The bad guys, I'll always roll the black dice when I'm rolling for initiative. The white dice will always be the warrior, and the black dice will always be the scoundrel. So, here we go. All right, so my scoundrel has 24 AP and only 18 for my warrior. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So I do have to get out of here and kind of ignore this Grim Reaper. Oh, and the Grim Reaper is always going to go on 10. So, well, I do need to get going, but I think I also want to kind of stop and pick up some of this loot here. So we're going to start with green. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And a sixth one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, to just pick this one up right here. I'm not going to do the advanced slower pickup, so I will just take whatever it is that I get. And I got myself a Lamellar helmet, which requires much more strength than I have. So this is just going to go into my 
just going to go into my shop. And I could have gone shopping at the beginning of the round, but I don't think... Ooh, actually, I could have gone shopping first, but I can't quite buy anything. I'm very tempted to get this one of these two things right here. And now I can't use these boots yet, but they could be really good once I do a little bit of leveling up for the scoundrel. And this rune, sh this round shield would be very good to have for my warrior because he now has a free hand. And so I think, I think I'm gonna do that if I have enough stuff because I should have done my purchasing right at the very no, I am out of my mind. I do the purchasing at the end of the round. Sorry about that. Well, now we know what I'm interested in buying later on. So anyhow, sorry about that. And then I'm going to continue with green and go one right to here. I'm just going to kind of finish this up and reveal a room right here. Well, that's lovely. So we have that. We're going to have two bad guys in there. And now the poltergeist gets redrawn. So we have an orc and a shaman. And luckily for me, I have those right here. Here is an orc. And here is a shaman. And while my scoundrel is going to have a hard time hurting that shaman, he will, the warrior will be able to hurt it because his hatchet does two damage and the shaman has one armor. Okay, and now I'm going to move to blue for my warrior. And I think I'm going to go... One, two, three, four, and also pick this up for five. And that'll be one, two, three, four, five. And I found this leather cord here, which I could actually use, though it's not particularly useful for the warrior. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna throw this to the scoundrel, which is zero AP, and I think he gets to just kind of put it on right away. Which doesn't do much for him, but it will give him a bonus on range attack if he ever changes his gear. And it gives him one more Psy point. And, perhaps more importantly, gives him a little bit of armor that he can use. Alright, and now I'm going to see if I can't get this guy. And now we're going to see if I can't get my scoundrel to take out this orc. So I will go one and two. And he's going to use his weapon, which is going to take him all the way down to two. And it's going to give him... Two dice plus three versus the orcs. Two dice plus five. So we're going to add two overall to the black dice here. And, uh, well, the orc got an exploding ten. So that is going to be 23 versus much less than 23. So no hit, no damage there. Then we're going to go back to our warrior and see if I can't get my warrior over there. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's where he's going to stop. And now, moving five spaces, our poltergeist. So one, two, three, four, five is coming after me. Okay, now we have both our orc and our shaman. And they're right next to some things to attack, so they're just going to come right at us. So we'll start with our orc on our scoundrel. Scoundrel's got two dice plus three. The orc has two dice plus five. So again, we have adding two to the black dice here. Okay, we have a nine versus much more than nine, so that is going to be two damage to our scoundrel, which puts him down to six. And then we have an attack on our other hero there, and he's got two dice plus five versus two dice plus two, so we have adding three to the black dice here. Ooh, that's going to explode. So we have 20 versus... Actually, it was 23 versus 22, which is going to be a crit. So it's actually going to be three damage to our warrior. And the question is, do I want to use my armor now? And I don't, because I have a ton of armor, but I don't think I need to use it yet. So I will just take that three damage, which puts him down to 10. And then we get to our warrior. And he's going to use everything he has left, going down to zero to take an attack at the shaman with his hatchet. He has three dice plus three versus the shaman's two dice plus four. So we're going to add one to the total of the black dice here. Oh man, another exploding roll. So we have 
13, 14, 17, or 16, 17. And I believe the tie goes to the attacker. I might be doing that wrong. And that'll be two damage, which will take this out, which is great. And that will give us one XP. And a new loot card with another helmet, which is not really useful to me right now. And then that's going to leave my scoundrel here. He's going to take another attack and see if he can't take out this orc. But first, I think I'm going to just move one to get a little further away, because I do have a range of two, and then I'll do my attack. We're adding two to the black dice here. Okay, we have an 11 and more than 11, so we have a total whiff. Good job, heroes. Now, no one is poisoned. There's no special actions to deal with. Now, we are going to move our doom counter one. Doink. And that's all we move because they're both on this one tile. And then I get to buy some stuff and do leveling up. There's no leveling up to be done. But I am going to buy this shield, I think. Because that's going to give me a lot more defense as my warrior. And that cost me a total of two. And I started with this trap here, so I'm going to use that to give myself the shield. Now I have a hatchet and a shield for the warrior. And I'm going to spend three and get these seven league boots, because that's going to be useful later on. Actually, instead, I'm going to spend three. I'm going to get this lard, this tower shield instead. And it's going to cost me three to get the other one. I don't have three exactly, so I'll spend four. And I will get these seven league boots, which I can't quite use yet. I'm going to have to get a little more sigh, but as soon as I do, I'll be able to use that. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that on my belt, so I'll be able to equip it quicker. And then I'm just going to remove this from the queue. Then I draw three more, which will be a trap, a skull necklace, and a padded helm. And we'll see if I want to get these later. All right, and let's roll up our initiative and get going. Oof. So that is only going to be 14 for our warrior. That's not good. And then, ooh, I got an exploding 10 there. Ooh, another exploding 10. So that's 20, 26, 29 plus 10. So I'm all the way up here at 39. So that's going to be a big round for my little warrior, my scoundrel here. And before I forget, we move the round marker into round two. All right, so I'm going to start out. And again, I'm just going to see if I can just take out this orc and then move on so it's not following behind me. So here we go. We're adding two to the orcs bonus, and that's going to take me 13 off of here. So it's gonna put me down all the way down to 26 for this attack. Here we go. And nine, eight, so that's a miss. I'm gonna do it again and take me all the way down to 13. And hopefully I can actually hit this dumb thing. So that's a four, oh, it's got an exploding 10. So again, I failed. Wow, this scoundrel just can't do anything. And now I think we do need to move on. So I'm gonna go up this way. I'm gonna slide everything down. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And have a free room. Ooh, well, look at that. I will put that just like this, and we get a new bad guy right in front of my face, and I'll just go ahead and go five and stop there. And we have a slime crawler. Okay, and now the question is, do I want to just run or take another hit here? And I think cause I'm going to have to jump. Well, so here's the thing. I could stay here. And just go this way and not worry about trying to jump over that. Because that is a pain to do some jumping. Well, but on the other hand, you probably would like to see how you jump. And I'll have to actually pass two tests because there's two squares there of a pretty high score. So I'm going I'm to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven right to there. And then we have our bad guy, Grim Reaper. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have our 
blue, so I'm gonna see if I can't kill this thing, which means I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna take a hit from the Grim Reaper, that's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the, everything else I got, which is 14 to swing the hatchet. Now the hatchet is three dice plus three versus two dice plus one, so I'm going to add two to my white dice. Okay, that's going to be enough for a hit. And that will take out the slime crawler, which is good because the slime crawler is going to be able to poison me, which would have been terrible. And that will be two experience. And my loot. And then my loot is a piercing arrow, which is a psi ability, which can't be used. So I'm just going to buy either one. I don't have enough psi yet. I'm just going to toss that into my backpack. All right. And I already moved him because I'm not going out of order. And here comes the orc. He's going to come right here. He's going to attack my warrior. But now my warrior has my big old shield. So I'm actually rolling four dice plus two versus the orc's attack of two dice plus five. So I'm actually just going to add three to the orc's attack. Okay. Wow. So I have an exploding crit there. So that's actually 20. 27, 34, far more than he has, so I am safe. And now we have Green, who is going to attempt to jump over that. So as near as I can understand, this is going to be two rolls. It's going to cost me five AP for each one. So to do, so I'm not sure if I use this all at once, or I have to actually do pay for ten because it costs five for one for each square. I think I have to pay ten and I roll them twice, and if I fail, I think I just stay right here. But, so I get to roll my two dice, and I get to add my strength and agility. So that's why I'm adding 17 for this. Ah, no, it's one roll, so I'm gonna have one left, and it's two squares. So I need to get a 20, is what I need to do. So I should be able to do this here. So that's gonna be an eight, plus my 17, so doink, I've jumped over and I have one space left and I'm going to, or I have one action left and I'm going to use my free action here to see what I can find. Oh, this is, this is not going to be good for me. This is a very large room and I will put myself right here. That's going to be my last action and I'm actually going to have to spread that out both sides. All right, so here we are. I spread all the rooms out, and I'm not fully sure if I have to put another room right there or not. So I'm gonna go with not, though that may of course not be the correct answer. And so you'll see we have two goblins here, and it's actually one goblin, but goblins come with another one. So there's two goblins there. I have a troll right here, a mummy here, and a dark knight up there. And of course I got the orc and the grim reaper behind me. So, yeah, going really well. Now, something I'm actually not clear on is I don't know if I'm supposed to go back and activate all these new bad guys. I don't think I am because I'm kind of past it here. And now I'm actually, you know, at the end of the round, I have discovered more room. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on moving on here. So we have no poison, no traps I have to deal with. And got to move the doom counter. It's only going to move one because they're still both on the same tile right here. They are coming up to an extra activation coming up soon, but not quite yet. Leveling up, only got one XP. Nothing I can do with that. Excuse me, I have two XP, I should say. Nothing I can do with that. I'm going to have to get all the way up to nine before I'm going to wind up getting a... I guess all the way up to six before I'm able to get a new level because I'll be able to pass them out and I need three each to level up any of my stuff. So I gotta get all the way up to six before I can actually use anything with that. So I won't be distributing them until I get that far up. So, well, here we go. Um, we are now at the bottom, buying or removing. So we do have this cobweb here, which is kind of eating up a spot. And we have this padded helm, which I can give for a little bit of armor if I wanted, but I don't think I really want to. So I'm gonna Get rid of this padded helm, just let that go. Then we have a skull necklace, which is interesting, but I'm not doing much with the psi, so I'm gonna kinda of let that go also. And then I'm just gonna leave the cobweb there, because one 
blocking me isn't that bad. All right, then we move up into round three. I get two new things. I get two new things. We have armored leather pants and a vampire dagger. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, I like that. So I'm gonna be looking to get that for somebody. Okay, so now we have to roll our initiative. Ooh, ooh, look at that. My knight, my warrior, I should say, he's got a lot. So he has 13, 22, plus his nine. So he has 31. So that is good. And then we have 14 plus 10 and 24 for the scoundrel. Okay. Now, I had to really figure out what the heck I want to do here. I mean, there is some value in just kind of walking away from this mess over here. And so I think that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to head this way and try to see if I can get myself out of the dungeon going this direction. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, he should not be going first versus my warrior. So actually, I'm going to start. I'm going to see if I can take out this orc and then I'm going to try moving and hopping on over that. So I got 3D plus 3. And the orc is 2d plus 5, so I'm just adding two dice, or excuse me, two points to what I roll for the orc right here. Okay, ooh, so he only has an 8, so I've matched that. He has plus 2, so I win by 9, which is not enough to get a crit, but I do believe that's going to be enough to kill it, because I do 2 damage with my hatchet. So we'll get rid of that one which will give me another XP and a loot, which is Sound Blast, which I clearly can't use, so I'll just be selling that at some point. And that cost me 14 for that attack, so that puts me all the way down to 17. Now I'm gonna activate here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to use my spear for 13 more and see if I can't take out that goblin. So I am rolling 2d plus 3 versus 2d plus 2, so I'm just adding 1 to my roll here. Oof. And I failed yet again! Wow! Scoundrel's garbage! Okay, and we're going back to the warrior, who's time for him to move. And we'll go 1, 2, and then I'm going to jump. And that's going to cost me 5. So right to there, and it's my strength plus agility, so that's going to be 22 right there. So unless I fumble, I can't fail here, and I did not fumble, doink, over to there, and I will then go one, two, three, and I'm going to go ahead and smack him there. Now I'm not fully sure if I get to do my smack first, because I, I think the way it works is I'm able to do an entire a move and then an action, I think. But I might be doing that wrong. It might be that I should be letting all these other things, the goblins and all, go first. But if that's the case, then, well, that's the case. And I'm just doing it wrong, so just be aware of that. But I will go ahead and attack with my hatchet, the troll. And the troll's 2d plus 3. I am 3d plus 3, so we're just a straight up roll here. And he has three health, so I really need to do something big here. Ooh, look at that. Those are two crits that I get to roll. So that's another nine, so that's 14. And another seven. So I well outclassed him with a huge hit doing, I think I wound up doing like four damage, but whatever it is, I smash that troll and get right out of there. It's good to know that our warrior can do something even though our other guy can't hit the broadside of a barn. And we found a war hammer, which again, I don't need, so I'm not going to use, but really he's just looted up so much stuff he's got. And then we do this guy. One, two, three, four, five. I assume it can float in the air. Now we have the goblins are going to go. Now the good news is that at least I have this kind of blocked up a little bit, which kind of keeps me a little bit safe. So they're doing 2D plus 4 
versus my defense of 2d plus 3. So we're adding 1 to this roll for the bad guys here. So they have 9, 10. I block the first one. Second one can't get me. All right, and then we're back to here. And I'm just going to make another attack and see if I can't take out that goblin right in front of me. So I'm 2d plus 3, and the goblin is 2d plus 2. So I get to add 1 to my own roll here. So I have a 12 versus his 8. So finally, boop, I get rid of one of them. And I found a secret door. So that is interesting. So I immediately draw a room tile and place it against the wall of the current room. And so that is both good and bad. So I, uh-oh, we'll put it right there, which we can't fully see. So let's see what I can do here. Let's put it over here. And so th this is both good and bad. It's good because it's getting me closer to finding the way out. It's bad because now I got another monster that I have to deal with here. And we have a dark mage over there. Okay. And now all these other bad guys are going to go. I'll go ahead and just do the mummy first because the dark knight's way up there. Heck, wow. It's, it's even off the board, isn't it? Yeah, the dark knight is all the way up there. It's just off the edge. So we'll start out. Well, I'll do the black knight first because he's only going to move four. So he's just slowly making his way to us. One, two, three, and four. And he's still not even on the board, so I don't really have to worry too much about him. The mummy's going to move five. One, two, three. And then it's going to attack for 2d plus three. However, I now have that tower shield, so I'm doing 4d plus two. So it's adding one to its roll. I should be fine. And so... I'm not even going to bother with the roll because I got 20 right there plus everything. So I easily defend against that. So, I mean, right now with my setup, I feel like I could just wipe everything out if it wasn't for this stupid poltergeist coming for me. Oh, and the Dark Mage. I think I already passed where the Dark Mage goes. So I think it's just going to hang out. Again, that might be wrong. Oh, you know what? I guess I have to put the Dark Mage up there. So, yeah, I guess it actually has to go up here because that's a smaller wall. So we can't quite see, but I'll put a token there. All right, so we're done all that. We have no poison. We have no special things going on, I don't think. And we do not. Then we have the doom counter. It goes up by two, so they're all about to get an extra activation. And that's going to hurt. And also that means the poltergeist is going to get to go. So let's just kind of move things through. One, two, three, four. He's making his way. This goblin's going to step up and attack. And I am doing this a little bit out of order, but they're all kind of getting to hit, so we're just kind of going with it. And the goblins get to add two to their roll. And fifth, so they definitely hit, doing only one damage. So I'm down to five on my scoundrel. That's not too bad. The mummy's going to attack again. But again, I'm not too worried about that. Oh, yeah. Not even close. And the Dark Mage, one, two, three, four, five, and six. It doesn't have line of sight there, so I think I'm okay. And then we have the Poltergeist, which will come right up here and gets to make its attack. And the bad news is I'm going to have to walk through that Poltergeist to get myself out of the way. Or I should say through the Grim Reaper. And so its attack is just straight up three dice, and it ignores all armor. So that is... Horrific, but I get to add two to my roll, so I'm hoping I will be okay here. Okay, oh, it gets to add another one. Wow, it gets to add two, so it's got 29, 38, 41 to my measly 18. So it's 41 to my 18, 20, 27. So it actually does five damage to me. And I can't use my armor. That puts me all the way down to five. Wow, that was really bad. Really, 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 really bad. All right. Don't quite have enough to level up. I need to get one more kill. Now we're doing some shopping. And I am going to buy for my scoundrel here this vampiric dagger. Simply because it's going to allow me to heal a little bit. And I have exactly enough money to do it. And I'll put aside my spear. 
And now I have a vampiric dagger because I don't lose anything except for a little bit of range. And I will move the round marker up one more and put out, and I'm going to clear out these leather pants right here. I'm going to just clear out the leather pants. Sorry, that looks like it did not zoom in. And the two new things, I'm going to leave out the cobwebs is I have a wooden shield and leather armor that I could pick up. Actually, you know what? I have so much money here with my warrior that I am going to spend two here with my studded helmet to clear out the cobwebs. And then we have a fine crossbow, so this could be valuable. All right, new round. And let's roll up some initiative. Ooh, I was feeling really good. Now I just, now I just got to run, I think. Of course, I have myself kind of blocked here. Ooh, boy, that's not good. Okay, so I have a 9, 18 total for my warrior. And I have 10, 20 total for my scoundrel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and see if the scoundrel can cut his way on through. So we're going to start out with an attack only using 9, puts him down to 11, see if I can kill that goblin. And, I, and I'm getting a plus one on this. Ah, jeez, another failure. So 18, so nope, I failed right away. I'm going to have to take another cut, because I've got to get past. Whoops. I will reroll all of that. So here we have a 15, I have an 8, and I failed yet again. Wow, I just cannot hit these things right now. This is really going badly. Okay, now, hmm, the question is, is there value? Because the problem is I'm stuck over there. I'm debating abandoning the scoundrel, which seems really messed up, but I think I might have to do that and just abandon the scoundrel and move on. I mean, I could try to go over here and fight my way through the mummy and try to move over here and get out. Oh, these are all really hard choices. I think, in retrospect, I wish I'd turned this the other way around so I'd be protected. But I didn't. Or do I want to try and move back down here and come this way? Because then maybe these rooms will connect right here with the final one. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go one, two. And then I'm going to jump. And I take four damage for walking through that, which is going to put me all the way down to one. And then I pretty much auto succeed unless I fumble. I did not. Doink. And I'll keep moving with one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to pause there. And I will look at the room next in case I can get past some of this initiative. So whatever I find doesn't come after me. All right. So now let's follow. Ooh, let's see. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. One, two, three, four. Well, this could be the end of the scoundrel. Here we go. Oh my. So, oh, another 10. All right, so we have 13, 19, 29, versus my 10, 11. So that's six total damage, which puts me at negative one. Now, since I'm a negative, it doesn't mean I'm dead, but it does mean that I get one less roll on my initiative, which means I'm hurting, which means there's a very good chance that our hero here is not going to make it out. And me, not he's been worthless, so I'm not even going to worry about being a hero and making sure that he does get out. He'll have to fight his way through. Anyhow, so that was that one. Now we have the goblin. So I have 2d plus 2, the goblin has 2d plus 4, so the goblin's adding 2 to its roll. I have 10, it has 10, so yep, that's another hit. I'm down to negative 2, and let's see, is everything going to go? Ogre, mummy not yet, 
um, but the dark mage will. So the dark mage will just go doink right there and start blasting. Now, the dark mage has this leaping lightning attack. And I'm not clear if it hits its own people as well. I just, I just don't know if it does. So I'm going to go with it does because that's funnier to me and maybe gives me a chance to get out of here. So it will go ahead and it's going to hit the goblin. Then it's going to hit me and it's probably going to take, well, it's almost definitely going to take out the goblin. Probably also take out me. So first I'll do the goblin and they are on even rolls here. Oh my gosh. So of course the goblin is fine. And then it's going to bounce on to me. I just have a straight 2D. So it's got plus three. Oh my gosh. Two more crits. Oh. So let's see. That is 28, 33, 39, 42 against my five. So that is three damage to me. Plus three more. So that's six more. So I'm now at negative eight. And then it would bounce on and hit. Oh, you can't quite see that. Let me back up those dice. Sorry about that. You're missing those dice. But basically, you see what I rolled. And it had these two dice were crits. Or, excuse me. Uh, these two dice were crits. Or whatever it was. A lot of crits. And I'm down to negative eight. There is no way I'm getting out of here with the scoundrel. And so I'm just going to own up to that. And let's go ahead and continue moving and see if I can't at least get one of my people out of here. Okay, so we check this room out for free. And there's only one thing in there, so that's good. Oh good, another dark mage. Actually, before I pull another dark mage, I think what I'm gonna do is, just so we can see more things, because I have the feeling that we're coming to the end of my life here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a different one right here and we'll get a spear thrower and we'll just see what happens there and you know I'm getting whooped here and we have not even gotten the time where I had to pull extra monster abilities oh this is promising it has a it's a giant and it has a lightning spear all right so we are all the way out now and there he is but luckily only the mummy and the black knight are still gonna act after after he's done so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go one two more and I'm just going to see if I can be lucky enough to take out this spear thrower right now. Because he's got 2D plus 3. I got 3D plus 3. So if I'm lucky and if I can actually be the one to get the crit here, maybe I can take it out right away. Ooh, and I got two bonus dice. Three bonus dice. So that's 33. And oops, two more rolls. So that's 36, that's way more than it needs. So boom, splattered it. And there we go, at least everyone will be able to level up this time. And I found myself a camouflage cloak, which will give me some psi resistance, but I'd have to change my chain mail out, so I'm not gonna do that. Now, I almost forgot, I do have a little bit of armor. I have a total of five armor. No, I don't have five armor. I have three armor that I can still use here, but pretty much only against the goblin because everything else is ignoring my, my armor. All right, so that was that, and I'm just gonna go ahead. Oh, no, because he's done. And now we have the Black Knights moving four. One, two, three, four. And the mummy's moving five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, well, this is going great. All right, so now we're going to roll up. Oh, we get to the end of the round. There is no poison. There are no special effects that have to happen. And now my scoundrel is only going to get to roll a single die. And we have 9, 18 for my warrior, and 7, 17 for the scoundrel. So, I mean, if I can just kill a couple things, I can make my way out of here. But the problem is I can't seem to to make that happen. But I have no choice. 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find my way out. And I'm hoping that there are two ways that I can get into this room. Because I do think that this next one is the way out just based on the setup. So here we go. One, two, three. And let's check the room. Okay, 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 okay. Look at that. Look at that. If we can, ooh, I might, maybe I can go save him. All right, so we're gonna try to fight our way through there. There is some kind of bad guy in there. And we have zombies. And so zombies are super slow, but they can resurrect. And so every zombie that's on the map in the special phase is gonna to get to add another zombie. So there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna be dealing with here. Oh, I didn't move the doom tracker, which should have gone one, two, and that should have gone one. Oh man, all right. So that's what's there. I guess I'm gonna to need to try to fight our way out. So I'm gonna start out and we'll see if he's able to take out this stupid goblin in front of him. Because if he can do that, he has a chance. And of course, another crit for the bad guy. It's not going to happen. So I think I'm going to... Wow, I'm such a horrible hero. I think I'm going to leave him behind. Because there is no way it's getting out of there. There's just no way. But we're back here. I'm going to go one, two, three. And so now I have to decide. I could try to kill the zombie first. But... If I do that, I'll be here for another round. Or I could just step on the ladder and climb my way out. Hmm. Well, gosh. Now, if I was just doing this as a whole playthrough on the channel, I would probably stop the game here and let you guys vote. But, so this is what I'm looking at. I don't, I just don't see how I get the scoundrel out. The scoundrel is going to take a, probably a guaranteed four damage from... The Grim Reaper. It's probably going to take more damage from the Mage. And I can't block either of those. Because it specifically says it's piercing damage that ignores armor. And I would be able to block one point of damage on the Mage. But still, I still have to fight my way all the way out. And I just, with the way I'm rolling, I just don't see it happening. So I'm going to be... The least heroic person ever. And I'm going to see if I can just step out. One here. And then I take 10 AP. And I'm going to try to climb out. Now my target is 28. And here's the hard thing. It's agility plus perception plus 2D. So I'm at an 18 plus my two dice here. And there we go. So I got it. Boop. So he's left. And the question is now, do I want to put us through the death of the scoundrel? I will play through... Keep going, and we'll see what happens here. So first, we have another three dice against the Scoundrel from the Grim Reaper. And, oh, looks like I actually blocked this one. I did. That was a 10, 17, 19. Yes, so I actually blocked that one, so that was good. But the problem is I'm still stuck. So I'll see if I can kill that dumb goblin and then move forward. And I'll reroll that. So I have a 12 plus 3. So I have a 15 versus the goblin's defense. So I do finally hurt the goblin. My vampiric dagger will actually suck the life out of it. So I actually killed the goblin. But of course, I find a trap. <laughs> Oh, goodness. And so I'm falling into the pit. I need to roll strength plus agility. So I'm at a 17 versus 29. Oof. So 17, 24, 20. So I fall into the pit. So apparently I reached down to pick up its loot and wound up triggering a trap. And I lose two pieces of armor, so I lose my Moon Greaves and my Friendship Bracelet. And I take two Poison Counters. And so I, I'm gonna, I guess I'm able to climb out of the pit next turn, but... Oh, goodness me. So I'm just really in a bad spot here. Alright, and then 
he will just zap me right down in the pit for another three dice versus my two. He's three dice. Plus. Oh, of course, another crit. So it has 14, 18, 28, 31 versus my 12. So that is three, four, five more damage. I'm at negative 13. And I'm going to not put us through the misery here. There is no way that the scoundrel is getting out. Now, maybe, maybe I could have fought all the way through there and dragged the scoundrel out, but I think more likely that I would have just had both of them die. However, the point is, you now have a pretty good idea of how this game works. Let me read the kind of wrap-up text to you. You climb up the ladder and escape the Grim Reaper just by the skin of your teeth, at least for the time being, as you can hear his unearthly voice echoing far behind you. Run as far as you can. I will still find you. You are marked now. Back in the village, you turn in all the items that you don't absolutely need into gold and head as fast as you can to the next bigger town, Remark. Once in the city, you immediately seek the unfortunately very costly counsel of a mage. Master Linnaeus confirms what death is proclaimed. You are marked, and even more powerful wizards will not be able to remove this dark mark from you. The only thing you can do, according to the mage, is to defeat death, the source of the spell. However, as you have already learned, this seems impossible. The wizard investigates for a long time, and later that evening presents a possible solution to you. You must acquire six artifacts that supposedly belonged to previous incarnations of the Reaper. Only when you possess all these items will you be able to gain the power of death himself, and therefore the ability to harm him. The artifacts are scattered all over the world, but at least the potential whereabouts are known. It certainly won't be easy, but at least you can choose which route you want to take first. Master Luneos hands you a map and his notes about all the artifacts. But from now on, you're on your own. All right, so that is the end of this one. Um, that was fun. Kind of tragic. Kind of enjoyed leaving the scoundrel behind. Stupid scoundrel. There we go. And please make sure you check out my preview video if that is already up. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.